Welcome to the Dude Row Show. Got a great show for you today, guys. First off, never deal with spider mites again, okay? I'm doing the hand talking too, Scotty. Ah. Never again. Never. <laughs> As well, uh, Scotty's microbiome, do I say? Your microbiome got yeah. beat? Is that how we oh say you got God. sick now? Yes, my microbiome has disappeared, sir. I was just interesting. You know, I've been sick since uh, I'm better now, man. But all last week I was, uh, I had some kind of stomach flu or whatever the heck it was. And it just made me think about what the hell's going on down there. So we'll, we'll talk about it. It's kind of interesting. I promise it won't be gross. <laughs> and in the news, you almost got to see this one to believe it, AKA watch the video show guys. Vancouver police arrest man operating drug dispensary in downtown East side. This we got to talk about, drug man. Drugs. Yeah, we're talking hard so, drugs, and we do have to talk about that because there's an interesting, both sides of the story, pretty interesting. Arnold, before we hop right into it, I'm going to hop into saying, get yourself some recharge, man. If you're growing the dank out there, you got some plants in the ground, in your grow, in your tent, yep. recharge them up, man. Uh, if you don't know the power of microbes, hence we're also going to be talking about the microbiome, which is kind of an interesting, we've hit it before, if you're a fan of the show, you know we like to talk about it. Um, but man, microbes do make growing easier. That's really the bottom line, right, Scotty? Absolutely, man. When I think about roots, I think they're these bare roots, almost like bare wires. They work. But if you can put a coating on there, A, it's a protective coating, and B, it's a coating that uh, nutrients can, are attracted to, and are held to. So it's it's pretty neat. So it's, it's really neat stuff and a huge benefit. Uh, without getting too deep into the science, uh, recharge is one of those things where when you use it, you come back and that next time you walk in the grow and you go, holy, wow, these things look way better, man. So uh, just give it a try. I think we got the little sample packs. You buy a two ounce for 10 bucks. But if you're a grower, give it a try. Uh, I think you'll be impressed. Uncle Dude at realgrowers.com. Check out the grow dots while you're over there. Yeah. One part nutrition for a full grow cycle. If you're in Canada, dudesworld.ca. Hook it up, grow dots and recharge. And while you're shopping for your grow, don't forget about the pros list, guys. All coupon codes anybody can use, dudegrows.com forward slash pros. Look at these beautiful pros. I love it. I love it. We got AC Infinity. We got seeds here now, can of nutrients, real growers. Coupon codes listed over there, guys. DGC vetted gear. Dude, Lastly, don't forget. Hang on. Dude, yeah. I got to bust your chops here, man. How many ladies do, do you know that are in the DGC? How many ladies? Plenty. Yeah. Keep calling them guys, okay? It is ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to be too woke here. I am not woke at all. <laughs> but I do think of With some the, ladies that we have in the DGC. Does Sunny in Vectopia, would she like to be called a lady or would that be insulting? Wow. Um, <laughs> I would call her a lady, sir. Well, and dude, pick the one lady that might not want to be called a lady. Bechtopia's, yeah. You know, there's, Grow moms there's a lady. lot. When you go to the DDC Cup, it's not all guys. Three, the, thank you. 3% growing. Man. 3% and growing. I'm just, trying to watch my listening. language, okay? So there you go. <laughs> if you're listening, Sonny, I'm just playing. Just playing. But DGCCup.com, June 3rd, Fort Collins, Colorado. Over 50 strains of cannabis for you guys to try. Come on out. It's gonna be a great day. It's about a five or six hour long vent. Um, and uh, DGSpep.com is where you can get your tickets. It is ironic because that's probably the hardest I've worked, maybe ever. Is that that, you know, just running around and being Scotty Real for five straight hours? Holy shit, that's tough, man. <laughs> It's just reminded me of how, I, I don't know if it's what I'm token or what, but how certain words and phrases, of course, depends on what uh, music, how it's affected you. But we don't have to go deep into it because we're going to do this in another episode. But you just said, did you say, isn't it ironic? I don't know. Alanis Morissette just came into head. That song just totally took over that word for my brain. Wow. Isn't it is that, was that what it's called? Isn't that ironic? Something it like is. That. It is like rain on your wedding day, man. Is that ironic, man? Most of the shit in that song wasn't ironic. Most of the I believe she came that. out famously <laughs> and had said that the song is about life. It's like all these things that have happened to you. Isn't life ironic? Don't you think? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Hey, I saw on, uh, I was scrolling social media. I saw these You people. were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was sick for days, right? Oh, that's right. You're right. You get I pass. saw these people that took a selfie of themselves for their profile pic. Like, they were taking a selfie. I couldn't figure out what was really going on there, but 
damn, they love each other, right? They love how they look. It was awesome. Denver has a, Our, a place called the Denver Selfie Museum now. So picture like a meow wolf just for selfies. Oh, man. Yeah, every great. girl on Tinder I'm is up. there. <laughs> I was just scrolling the uh, DTC Cup sponsors, and yes, it's kind of turning into like a genetics exchange, too. I mean, there are like, we got Spain Lion Genetics, Easy Day Cultivars, Gingerbread Genetics, Irie Genetics. Um, we're going to have Dominion Seed Company, Raw Genetics. Dope. If you have a, a genetics company, if you sell seeds, where is a better place to go than the DGC Cup? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> you know what I mean? And hit us up for Know Your Breeder. Sure. Contact Banner anytime. We always look for awesome breeders to uh, do Know Your Breeders with. For real. Yes. So we're going to get into Grow Talk here, guys. If you're a fan of the show, you might feel a little of a different vibe. I'm not sure what we're doing. It's trying to get some of these Grow Talks clipped out of the show so we can repost them out. So there's plenty of people that just can't consume our show, don't have either the time or the attention span. Um, they so we want to make sure voice. we're getting the grow knowledge. What's that? <laughs> or they hate my voice. <laughs> Remember that <laughs> well, You'll see these Grow Talk questions coming out on our channel again, but they will be put over in a separate playlist. Um, so that's the vibe of what's going on. Just so you know, just so you yeah. know. Hang on, Grambo. Have you gotten your skin thickened yet for the comments? You've been at first off. What's up, oh, Grambo? No, what's up? Hello, boys? sir. Yes, 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 yes. Have you gotten your day? It takes a little bit, man, to where you just laugh at them. It depends. Sometimes, uh, you know, as a, as a performer, I'm sure anyone in the YouTube space or performer spaces, some days you feel strong. And sometimes some days you don't feel strong. And so on the days you feel strong, it's just like, oh, it's it's kids being kids. And on the days you don't feel strong, sometimes it hurts your feelings. And yes. so it's the best just to go with, you know, they're they don't think of you as real people. We're, we might as well be Gumby, you know? It's just I, like it's like sports fans, like fuck Rambo, go, go bulls. You are right. With sports, <laughs> you're like, you know, that guy probably feels like shit about dropping that ball, right? Yeah, I'm just fucking I'm just the the Knicks coming into the Bulls away game, uh. man. I'm just trying to Damn, you should get a little shocker for every time I curse. We're trying not to Ooh. get the uh, parental advisory. It's yeah. kind of fun, right? I bet you can get one on Amazon. It's a shock collar. I mean, I think we got some shock collars that Tito wears. <laughs> well, those things, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't have a thick uh, skin of fur, right? As long as I can do it remotely from where I'm at here, Scotty, I'm down for the shock collar. Idea. Get me a I'm sure the tech is there, man. Yikes. That's, All right, let's do it. That's scary. Let's do this all right we're gonna get into spider mites here and uh, i haven't dealt with them in a long time and i mean i don't know uh exactly why i think it's healthy plants amongst other things but let's get into this for today's growth sure. talk we're gonna be talking about spider mites all right how to get rid of them and how to keep them from coming back because in the question coming up the grower had them two times in a row and is afraid to pop beans at all ever again sure so Knowing that, man, if you let them go, if you're like, if I, I've seen some scary stories. I've seen some pictures of just webbed up buds. They'll suck the life right out of your plants. Ugh. If you can, have you seen those, Scotty? When we covered oh, back yeah. in the day, I haven't seen it in a while. A top cola, it's like web, just and that's that's on the grower, man. But if you follow the steps you're about to learn in this video, you will be able to maintain a pest-free grow and get a lot more high-quality harvest moving forward. Yeah, definitely want to be able to get to harvest, man. I can't have, I've never had the unsmokable webbed bud, but let's prevent it, man. So let's get into this. This is brought to you by Optic Foliar Transport, guys. If you haven't checked out Optic Foliar, they have a lot of great products uh, for foliar feeding as well as we'll get into this transport, a couple tips on how to use it to make your product go farther and how to beat mites. So let's yeah. get a question here. This is off of dudegrows.com, guys. Get your grower questions up on dudegrows.com. There's plenty of the grower. This one's pretty fresh, actually, as of today. So we don't have a lot of comments on it right now, but there's a great community helping out over there. And anybody can use a free account. And while you're there, use the search bar. So this is from AAH3880. I need help with spider mites in my grow. I've lost two grows of about 14 plants, and I'm getting pissed. I hear you, buddy. I went above and beyond like crazy. I've bleached everything before each grow. I've sat down and made sure the room was a thousand, wait, that's a million percent sanitized, actually. A million nah. percent sanitized. But freaking yet, I've gotten spider mites mm -hmm. and I got my hands on some old school strains. I don't even think about popping them until I figure this out. Um, so we can take it from there. Take it from sure. there. As far as getting them two times, let's get into first, take it into identifying. Let's, sure. let's how, how do we know we have spider mites? 
I can unfortunately tell you this from firsthand experience. First off, you got a scout. You got, I'm looking for one. I always keep it around a little jeweler's loop. And every time you go in the grow, uh, you want to just take a look for uh, spider mites. It's the underside of the leaves. You'll see some eggs on there. There's something called, I think it's stippling, stipling. I don't know, but it's a little uh, dots you'll see where they're putting their yep. little mouth part in there and sucking the uh, sucking the juice out. And then the last thing, man, is if you didn't do any of those and waited too long, you're going to see webs. And by the time you see webs, you got a problem. <laughs> Let me touch on that. When you, we're saying scouting, like the, as with a lot of things when you're dealing with pests, being vigilant at doing it when you're in your grow, Look, at spider mites aren't hard to find, and if you find them early, they're not hard to deal with. It's when people let it go, you need to be looking underside and lower leaves. I find them to appear on the lower leaves first a lot of the time. So be looking in your lower canopy. Look at that plant in the back corner of your room that's hard to get to. You don't even need it. You're going to want to have a jeweler sloop. But you can identify this problem with the naked eye as well and know what sure. you're dealing with right away. So sure. how do I identify? You have uh, the, what, a few different types of mites is what you wanted to get into? Uh, you know what? Just the two-spotted spider mite is the one that I've only seen. They do sometimes start out a little reddish, but they turn white pretty quick. And you can always tell, man. Uh, they've got just two spots on the back. And it's pretty easy. Two-spotted spider mite. Next thing I see here, which I say is not just for spider mites, but for anything in your grow are the sticky traps. Yeah. Yellow absolutely. sticky traps that are out there. I like to have some at soil level as well, uh, mid and canopy level. You don't have to go excessive with them. These are there not to the like well, I'm not saying sticky traps are what you're using to beat this problem. You're using it to find out what problem you have or don't have. You might get yeah, something just, on there and then you get a really good chance to look at it without it moving around. Then you get your 60 times, 30 times loop out. And you can really identify what you're dealing with. So I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of sticky traps. Yeah, it's sometimes tough when those bugs are running around. You can't really get a good look at them. Uh, so sticky traps, at least they're stuck on there. You can see those two spots and you know exactly what you got. And also, as you, you want to monitor the population, you know, you might knock these things down and then you see one or two coming back and that lets you know to, to nip it in the bud. They could make like human sized sticky traps and somehow it traps you. But what would be the attractant to it? There'd be a lot of it's different like, things you can put on there. Well, just speaking of spider mites, they're not really a tra The yellow attracts them, but they're also very easily blown in the wind. That's how they move from one uh, plant to the other. And so they do get blown uh, from one plant to the other. So we're getting blown on them sticky traps or at least in the, uh, the vicinity of those sticky traps, I think is a good thing. Well, let's say you found out, you know, you've identified them. How are we going to get rid of them? First off, you, depending on what tools you have, changing your environment. Scotty's got a little yep. chart here of hatching, which I like. Um, but let's first hit on that. I mean, the hotter it is, the more they come out, right? Yeah, I mean, at 60 degrees, uh, you've got yourself, takes like 15 days for them to incubate. So you got a solid two weeks for them to go from uh, an egg to an adult. At uh, 68 degrees, it goes down to seven you know, 6.7 days. When you get up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which was a lot, what a lot of people's indoor grows are running, you're at 2.8 days. I mean, you're literally at, you know, every three days, those things are multiplying and we'll get into that. Oh my gosh. That's like they're at spring break. Cause they're like, they're partying on the beach, man. Uh, two, they go from 15 to 2.8 days at 86 degrees. So not wait, 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 wait. It's not like spring break because it's a three to one male or female to male ratio. Okay. You take me to a beach where you get a three to one female to male ratio. I'm there, man. The, uh, if you, if you have a sealed grower, if you run AC or you have the ability to bring in cool air and you have, you know, doing this for a few days while you're handling your spraying and trying to handle the infestation, um, is really going to slow them down. You don't want to keep it there too long because it's un in turn going to slow down your grow. It'll slow sure. down your grow's metabolism as well, but it's a great tool if you can bring your temperatures down. I like spraying. If you're in veg, guys, spraying works great. The one trick with spraying, of course, is coverage and how often you're doing it. By coverage, I mean you want to get as much as the underside of leaves as possible. We're going to go with a product. There's a lot of products out there. A couple of examples would be like Neem, uh, Dr. Zyme. Um, Azadiractin is a, is, a, is a fraction of Neem that's really good. Um, you've got the uh, the microbe ones, the Bossaria, Bossanova, or whatever it's called. There's a, there's a lot of options there, but it's important the frequency and how you spray these things. We just talked about the life cycle. 
Uh, you've got it at uh, 86 degrees. You've got every three days that these things are hatching. So you need to spray every three days because these sprays do not kill the eggs. They kill the adult bugs or they kill the bugs, but they do not kill the eggs. So you got to break that life cycle. And I would spray every three days, at least for 10 days. That math would work or two weeks if you right. can. Um, and then continue to scout like crazy after the spray. So you do not want to bring these into bloom. We'll get into that in just a second. This is where I want to tell you with that optic foliar transport, um, when you're spraying, this enables you for one, you can spray with the lights on because if you don't, if you leave your lights on, depending on what you're spraying, you can get little beads little button, they magnet of water, which is our spray solution, which will magnify the light, your grow light and burn your leaves. Yeah, what do they say? Um, Surface is tension is what's that called? When the it, it just there's mm -hmm. a reason why it wants to stay in a bubble, and then so somehow you got to break that surface tension, and that is what uh, uh, transport does. So it's pretty cool. Also gets it into the leaf, and Dinesh over at Optic has uh, I think a PDF, a chart over on his site. Um, it enables you to whatever expensive spray product you're using, using it at half or quarter percent rate as well, which wow. makes your product go way further. Wow. Um, so the only problem, Scotty, I've seen mainly. Uh, just to hit back on spraying frequency, growers that don't you know, mark it on the calendar, mm -hmm. and then also scouting like crazy. Those yep. two things. And coverage yep. is hard, man. Get a good sprayer. We're not going to get into it now. Get a fogger. Those work awesome. Get a mini fogger. Some great way to apply um, whatever product you are for the mites. Yeah, I can't. I'll say it again. Scout because it's a lot easier to control these these uh, bugs or these pests when there's just a few of them. Once they get out of control, there's not a ton you can do. When you're seeing webbing all in your in your flowers, and again, if you scout during veg, you can nip it in veg. Once you go to flower with these things, your option you don't want to spray anything on them, or there's you know, much less options. So. You got to touch on mites and flower. So I'm meaning developed flowers. You don't get developed flowers till about two weeks on, three weeks on some strains. Right. I'm right. okay the first three weeks, depending on your flower development of spraying some things, but really you don't want to be spraying much. So mites in flower, I look at other options. Uh, mechanical removal. I've heard of some interesting things uh, from one, uh, pressurized, like cold water spray. You've done it, Scotty. Yeah, I've where done you it can get me out of a jam. They, they, they hate it. You're literally just spraying them with cold water, knocking them off the buds. You're drowning um, of course, them. You're, you don't, you're, you're filling their whatever it is, and you're actually drowning them. So it's, it's, uh, so it's kind of cool, man. Make sure you have environmental control after this. You don't want to have a big humid area that you just sprayed some buds. Um, I've heard of growers even using pressurized air from down to an air can for maybe a smaller grow or having some type wow. of way if you have a compressor or pressurized air or also very carefully now i'm not saying i fully suggest all these it depends on it depends on your growth style i've seen people even use a vacuum at a, a turn down sure. speed to get rid of life at this point as long as you're getting as long as they i was just gonna say as long as you have a long hose and the part the, you know the the main part of the vacuum is not in your grow don't bring the vacuum yeah. in your grow <laughs> Yes. That's actually, I, I um, never do that. I get a nice long hose and I keep the vacuum way outside my grow, man, just to keep contaminants out. Uh, and predators. That's another great option if you have a decent population or it doesn't even have to be a decent and you want to release predator mites. Predator mites yep. will go in there. They can do a pretty good job. Some people are concerned about the predator mites staying around. Will they be in the bud? When they don't have food, some of them um, get carnivorous or they just leave carnivorous that's not the right word cannibalize cannibalism yeah <laughs> which is pretty creepy man, yeah when they just start eating each other after they're done eating the bugs but hey as long as they, as long as they did um, what i wanted them to do i don't care what they do after work right but we dig on arbico organics great source of information over there even mm -hmm. just to learn as far as about predators or what type of beneficials that you could get um that will work for you in flowering when you don't want to spray things Absolutely. More importantly, I just, hang on. I just want to go over real quick the environmental thing. When you are mm -hmm. knocking these down, super important to lower your temperatures. You got to slow the life cycle of those things down. I think they, an adult will lay 300 eggs. I mean, that's pretty, you know, you, you better slow that down. You can either have them doing that once every four day, every two or three days, or once every 14, 15 days. We don't want these again. This grower is just looking back at them, two grows, two grows right. lost, which means you're, to me, it means you're bringing them in. 
Yep. Don't cross contaminate, man, with the, not even just the outside world, like maybe your house, maybe your dog's bringing them in, sits on the couch, you sit there, pet your dog. If you've had them twice, it's likely you're going to get them a third or a fourth time. you got to be clean to go on your grow, change the clothes if you're outside. I don't know. I haven't gone to the extremity of needing a shower every time, but I can no. see depending on what I'm back. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, even just walking out through a bunch, if you've got grass or you're walking to your grow, it's a shed out back and you're walking through the grass, that on your on your clothes, on your socks and all that, man, it can do something. On your shoelaces, you can bring pathogens into your grow that way. Yes. And the number one tip that's the most affordable, guys, it's probably the third time we've said it, scout. And then yes. scout again. Scout means you're going around in there and you're looking. They're, they're not that hard to identify. You will see these. You will see the damage before it becomes a major problem and you can take care of it. And it's no different than scouting your trichomes or you know checking out your trikes. Same exact jeweler's loop and you're just looking here. This is my $5 jeweler's loop right here. I always keep it around and when I'm in there, I'm just taking a look. I look at the underside of the leaf. I look if there's anything clogging the stomatas and just make sure everything looks good. I own. I hope we helped you out, guys. If you want a ton of more information on dudegrows.com, use that search bar. Just type in spider mites. You will come. 25, 30, 40, 50 posts are going to come up about growers dealing with these and great comments on room as well. Don't forget if we helped you or you're digging this, comment, like, subscribe, man, or leave your best tip in the comments. I know there's growers listening and have dealt with them. Um, what's the way that you've beat down on spider mites? Like to hear. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to know that there is a way to do it, though. If you start uh, early, it's really important to start early. That'll be my final thoughts. Guys, I do want to suggest we were hanging hanging at the happy hour last Friday, Scotty. Um, you're requested, by the way, to hang out this Friday at the happy hour. Oh, oh, FYI. Yes. I just so, need to be invited is all. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So DGC, you just invite me all the time. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, DGC producers, uh, hang out on the Discord Fridays, man. Not only on Fridays, there's all kinds of shiz. A lot of good grower buzz on that Discord. DGC producer benefit is what it is. But, but that's a whole extra guys, show, right? Man, so Actually, I didn't want to say. I, I'm sorry, I got to interrupt. That's a whole extra show, the DGC. It's not just hanging out on Discord, right? Yes, the 420 Happy Hour is a whole nother show. We give up seeds every show and hosted by Soup the Gardener. And sometimes yeah. uh, Scoop, uh, Soup invites the uh, DGC on. So if you're hanging out during the happy hour, sometimes you might be on the happy hour. If you've got experience, Soup's open to bringing DGC on to talk. So whoa, it's pretty whoa. cool. Oh, no, not me. That's why I haven't <laughs> been invited in a while. Huh? Uh, me too. Sunny, <laughs> Sunny Bechtopia invited me, but I'll right on someday. Check out dudegrows.com forward slash support there if you want to become a producer. But I got it. What I was getting to, I know Scotty had to interrupt, it's fine, uh, was the DGC guides. If on dudegrows.com you click on grower, let's see here, you click right on grower help, I believe at the top, that'll take you on over to check out. There's a list of DGC guides that are awesome. Um, there's tons of information, and I went to the IPM guides, and there's a lot of information on spider mites. So go there, not just spider mites, cloning, edibles, hydroponics. There's some edible recipes, microbes, nutrients. We just, when we gathered the best articles together and put them all under these guides, even a way to search the guides as well, if you want. All right. So I did want to mention that. And I do want to thank, dude, we got some producers here. I got some good shout outs today. I'm, I'm stoked. I'm going to take the uh, first two here because I feel like I'm kind of a laid back dad. So what's up, laid back dad, DGC producer and Stony Hawk. Helping me be a laid back bag. Just check it out, dude. Stony Hawk sent out freaking two different phenos, two bags of Violator Kush, pheno number one and two. Um, and these are one to one ratios, as well as sent out a little bit of fresh pressed rosin from each one. Ooh, which, wow. okay, what's the best way? Can I top Can I top bowls with this if I want? That's okay, or is that disrespecting it? <laughs> a, a fresh rosin? Mm, I don't know. Can, yeah, would, you can. Yeah, for sure. I would, for sure. I'm not saying it's a huge respect to it, man. Well, you don't have a little... It's like asking for ketchup at a restaurant. You at know? a steakhouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but if you got it, you got it. Dude, my dad got denied ketchup at the steakhouse <laughs> one time, and he pretty much flipped that. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, dude. So thanks, Stony Hawk, man. That is awesome to share. And I've been digging on the one to one. I really appreciate it. I got to ask, Who man, is got? Stony Hawk still, yeah. still doing stuff? Tony Hawk? Remember, he was like 15 Love. and he was like the, he just, it was the best. Man. Yeah, he's still out there. I actually just saw that there's a contest going out there where you can win $10,000 and hang out with him. For some reason, 
Scotty Real, that was my first Instagram post when I got on Instagram today. It was like, hang out with Tony Hawk. Or get $10,000, which would you pick? Mm, I mean, dude, yeah, which no. would you pick? 10 grand and hang out with, with Tony Hawk for a weekend or for a, a, a night, we'll say. I would, uh, no clue, really. I'd pick the Tony Hawk. Pick 10 grand. <laughs> Yeah, but you'll ne- you'll get a chance to earn ten grand in your life. You'll probably never get another chance to hang out with Tony Hawk. You know, I hung out with Tony Hawk in my head. Okay, watch the documentary <laughs> until the wheels fall off, and you will be motivated. Badass documentary. And I don't know why. Is this wrong to say? I was at. Uh, no, I'll hold this. I'll, I'm going to hold my thought for uh, another. another usually, if I'm the question, if the if is, is this right to say? It's no, usually it's don't usually say it. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Which would you rather have ten thousand dollars or hang out with Xavier Rudd? Ooh, with or without a shirt? Well, come on, oh. <laughs> that man doesn't wear a shirt. <laughs> come on, I got to give it, it up. Is to Jay. Okay, I was trying to get you back on track since I've uh, uh, Go since ahead. I give it since up. I got, Scotty? JLS Monster. I wonder what that means. And uh, Northern Light Kind. I know what that means. Okay. You guys don't know why we're giving it up, man. These are all DDC producers, and this is for you producers. Butters, Butters from Rooted Leaf wants to gift their DGC ticket to the cup. Can't make the cup, so I said, you know what? What's up? He did he write it like that? Butters always writes in the third person. Oh my god, that's hilarious! <laughs> yes. This is the Butters from that Butters, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who seems like a really cool dude because yeah. he is, can't make it. I think it's his kid's graduation. Oh wow! And uh, he's just like, yo, I want to give this ticket. Up, Butters man. always talks in third person. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Butters would like to give away his ticket. And I will shout out Rooted Leaf. Yeah. That's uh, a nutrient company. I guess he's using or works for. But uh, thank you, Butters. Very generous, sir. Hell yeah. If you're a DDC producer listening, message me over on Patreon and let me know. Uh, first come, first serve, and uh, we'll hook you up. See if you can get get somebody to the cup that couldn't afford a ticket. And dudegrows.com forward slash support. Guys, too many benefits to list here. Deals on recharge, grow dots, three seeds. That, those deals are 30% off, by the way. Supporting our show pays for itself. $10 a month if we're entertaining you. You're sitting there enjoying this content. You're driving along. You're at work on the forklift like a buddy of mine does. Since he listens to shit all day, I'm like, it's probably dangerous against the rules on the forklift. Go to dogrows.com forward slash support and vote with your dollars. Thank you very much, DDC Producers. Hang on. I listen all, right. all day with these things, but I just put one headphone in. And uh, you can hear what the other here. Nothing dangerous about operating hear- heavy equipment with <laughs> only half your hearing. I don't know, man. That's like I, like a guy on a construction site operating a, a dozer or something, just listening to loud, heavy metal verse. Yeah. I just sounds maybe not safe. Back in the day, it'd be a giant boom box tied to it somewhere. I used to listen to the Dude Gross oh. Show while I drove a Zamboni around children. <laughs> oh, exactly, man. Exactly. Uh, That's the worst that can happen. Those are, well, I mean, you can... Uh, Run into the boards and break the glass like oh, I, did, no. I did once. I get it. I, I was showing off to girls and I, it was embarrassing. Oh, man. Oh, well, man. Let's see what's growing on with your stomach, dude. So you got like what, a little stomach virus? The stomach, no, so you I thought was, you had food poisoning for a little bit? I was just sick all weekend, man. Or all, like from Wednesday night, I'd say Thursday, I, I worked and I was like, ah, shit, stuff ain't right. And then till about this morning, I think I woke up at a, uh, 11 o'clock this morning and I was like I think I can work man but it was just so it's like a stomach flu or something like that and first off dude before I even get into of course this is going to become about microbes <laughs> but dude I was just laying there I was so just feeling like crap and I had YouTube on and I look at YouTube and it's my friends are on YouTube ready to talk to me about weed uh, Matt from I Can THC was one of the guys I saw uh, I'm sure I left some folks out Rasta Jeff was on there staring right at me saying get up scott let's talk about weed man a uh, cortez the conqueror has his own show now with uh, i think i saw the one with chronic i learned a lot about weed man jr soup uh, michigan matt was on a cannabis episode so it was just cool man it was just cool i will say a little grow mixed I, I, in there yes sir i was just gonna say i get it man as much as like it's it's been hard to almost we'll say it in a kind way understand the rules with youtube um, man, I mean, at late night, I've been getting into whether it's a plane crash documentary. Uh, shout out to a YouTube creator, Whistle and Diesel. He's got some crazy shiz. 
Um, Cletus McFarland. I don't know if you've ever seen any of his stuff, but man, it's, <laughs> no. uh, they got some cool shows. Oh, yeah. I only watch YouTube now, man. I just want to cancel the cable. My wife still watches it. But you still yeah. have cable. You are so in the dark ages. I try. You know, you can only change people so much. <laughs> Actually, you can't really change people. Yeah. Mrs. <laughs> real, Mrs. That, real and nice guy Kenny would have a conniption fit. Yes. They're TV. I think that's a now. demographic. It's cool. That's Florida having sure. cables like using AOL. I think you're in a certain demographic at that point. Like you would get yeah. made fun of at the younger party. He yeah. has cable. I'm in my 50s. I have to tell myself that sometimes, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I was psyched to have MTV, man. Music television. Uh, I, I do want to shout right. out, man. Uh, Cannabuzz had on Farmer Freeman. And Farmer Freeman is a guy that taught me or I learned about the hop latent viroid. And then I went and ordered some kits. And so I'm going to go, okay. I believe you take a little sample, you send them back. Uh, when I was uh, away in Costa Rica, Kenny was like, I don't know, they don't look great. And when I came back, of course, I'm like, oh, they've got the viroid, man, that's it. <laughs> and so I, it turns out they look all better now. Maybe they just need a little, little Scotty's magic touch in there. Maybe they missed me. But uh, yeah, I ordered the kits and I figured I'd play around with them. So thank you, Farmer Freeman and uh, Cannabis, actually, man, for making that all happen. And uh, yeah, I'm learning, bro. Hell yeah. Shout out to JR and Q over there. I did the Cannabuzz episode not too long ago. And it was a blast. So. I saw you on there, man. Yeah. Well, unconsciously, I didn't mention you. Yeah, no, I had to chime in to make sure. Check out the Josh Grambo episode of Cannabis. <laughs> oh, Grambo. You're awesome, man. I was thinking about that, man. It is really fun working with you, bro. Oh, it's fun working with you guys. Literally, everyone finds you guys so funny. You're just as funny in real life. That's 100% sure. Well, I always say Scotty Real is Scott times two. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I told Hi-C, I, I've been writing roast jokes about you guys for the DGC Cup. I can't tell anybody about it. I told Hi-C about it, and he laughed pretty hard. Uh, that's the day Grambo gets fired, you know. <laughs> Get out! No, I'm an expert at walking the line. Trust me, that, uh-huh. that's what comedy is—is is walking the line. That is so funny, man. That is so funny. <laughs> bring him back. Bring him back to your uh, gut and microbes, man. So obviously uh, they were off and hurting. So what the hell are they? Is this the same as like bacteria and trichoderma and things in our rhizosphere? Same type of it is. That's analogy. Yeah, I'm thinking that remember that we were poking fun of the guy that called up and he put recharge, he drank recharge, <laughs> thought it was an energy drink. That was the thing that happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe he's on to something. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Don't drink recharge. Wrong microbes. But it talks about just how you just, it's not telling you anything you don't know, but you have uh, microbes in your gut and they're bacteria. There's, I think it's mostly made out of bacteria. And dude, it's the different bacteria grow uh with different foods so if you're feeding them sugar well, yes sir when i hear that stuff that's me i want to catch people's attention here is this okay interesting kind of boring what does it really matter to me they're just microbes man can't even see them can't see no. them i don't even know if it's really there oh, so they work. Like a food and mood food and mood center.com <laughs> says gut bugs are involved in many important processes that extend beyond your gut including mm-hmm. your metabolism body weight immune regulation as well as brain functions and mood. That's like everything, man. So there's many yes. factors that influence the type and amount of bacteria we host. And although most of us belong to a certain interior type, similar to having a certain blood type, each person has a unique bacterial footprint. What is your bacterial footprint, Scotty? Um, I don't know. It's good. Sativa dominant. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know how you know that your your gut has, uh, like they say, it's like your second brain. You got a gut feeling about something. Dude, on a ladder. I'll get on a ladder or a scaffolding and I'll look over and I'll be scared in my gut. My gut will be like, dude, don't fucking kill me, man. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah, that, that's very cool. Oh, actually, definitely. Grambo. Yeah, man. I'm not supposed to curse anymore. Ready? Ready is a do-over. The micros would be like, dude, don't kill me. <laughs> Like, Don't tase me, bro. <laughs> we are trying so hard to get that parental advisory. We just don't understand it. It's the most random thing in the world. And it really affects growing the show and getting the show out to new people. A lot of teams, times if you get that, is it called a parental advisory? Is that what it's called? It's the age gating. Age but, gating but it really yeah. is a subscriber gating. It yeah. sends us out to the GGC and no one else. So Yeah, you know. so we're trying to figure out what it is. So I'm gonna clue Which wouldn't have been else. a big deal. This is what I always make the dis- distinction about Dude Grows. 
subscribers wouldn't be a big deal, but you guys' channel got deleted. So your subscribers went from 100,000 to a few thousand. So right. that's a big deal to get subscriber gated. That under 100, that under 90,000, they were fans. They need to know about you guys. So, yeah. Do you think I'd, we'd get age gated if I drank a delicious Mark Mike's Hard Cranberry Lemonade? Hopefully. Mm. Made with real. No, it doesn't have anything real in it, actually. <laughs> it needs alcohol, though. Back to dude about Scott's microbiome. Yes. Where, <laughs> dysbiosis. Where from? Okay. Maybe yes, you sir. had some dysbiosis, Scotty. This oh, is yeah. when, in some instances, the gut microbiome becomes imbalanced or disrupted. This is called di- di- wait, dysbiosis. Dysbiosis? You know, there you go. Um, there you go. This can be caused by a lot of things, including stress. It's amazing how much stress can affect a lot of shit um, with your body and sickness, illness, being overweight, overuse of antibiotics, or oh, poor yeah. eating quality. So, in fact, diet is the most important modifiable factor. Hear that and modify. Like we can do something about it. They um, were saying there's the certain. Composition of, oh, sorry, I just gotta jump in on that because they say that it does. It makes sense. Certain microbes feed on sugar. Other microbes can colonize and break down fiber and grow and, and feed on fiber. So it's like if you're just giving your body total sugar and processed food, then you're going to colonize for those microbes. If you're giving a whole grains and and uh, food that takes a lot, don't oh, also the sugar stuff. It's really easy to break down the processed food, so it breaks down right in the top of your intestines. Uh, when you start uh, using like fiber and all that, well, it takes a long time. It goes through the intestines, it gets feeds the whole gut. You know, your whole intestines is pretty cool. I did find, uh, let's see here. Oh, you have 10 signs of an unhealthy gut. Is this the, uh, I just found this man. I was, like I said, I was, uh, I was sick and it's sick and in bed. (laughs) Yeah. What do we got, man? But uh, check this out. So you have an upset stomach. That one makes sense, right? You have trouble sleeping. You're intolerant to some foods that make sense. Maybe some allergies. You crave sugar because your brain and your second brain and your gut is can, you know, just taken over by sugar microbes and microbes that love sugar. So they're demanding more. You've gotten them addicted. I don't know. It's pretty and interesting. Sorry if you've heard my, my soapbox. And well, my, this is like my, my message. What can you do about it? We've heard this our whole lives. Eat good and exercise, right? That's like number one for like a ton of stuff. Eat good and exercise. I always preach on the show about preservatives. It's a hard world. Like like to avoid preservatives altogether, super hard. This is a yep. out of medium.com. What, wait, wait, wait. What do preservatives do? I got to ask, man. What? I'm sorry I'm interrupting so much, but it's really cool uh, content. And we're not in the same room, so it's hard. But what do preservatives do? They kill microbes. Man. They keep your food preserved, man. So they did a study uh, with mice, a couple studies. Poor mice, man. I don't, I don't, I'm not ever like born again <laughs> into a mouse study. Um, so they, they studied a, a combination of preservatives, so, and these are very popular. Sodium benzoate, benzoate sodium nitrate, and potassium sorbate um, to, to mice similar with human gut microbiomes. Um, so sodium benzoate bez- is commonly used in sodas. Sodium nitrate is used to preserve meats and cheeses and so- potassium sorbate, which I see in a lot of stuff in the stores for baked goods. So I get what you're saying, Scotty, without these, uh, without these preservatives, it, a lot of stuff would go bad quick. Our, our food wouldn't be as stable. The grocery store wouldn't be, it would have to, stuff would be going bad on the shelves. Like literally. Yes. I'm not advocating for this by any means, but that's why uh, I just had a sandwich with some deli rolls. The deli rolls sure is, you know, they'll last three days, four days after <clears throat> day five, they're growing actual blue mold on them. Uh, you can like those Hawaiian rolls. I'm not picking on them, but you can leave those in for three weeks. They kind of seem okay. I guarantee my they got some preservatives. Hawaiian rolls. <laughs> They're delicious. When I go to the store, I have to date my bread because it, uh, the bread we get at the normal Safeway does not go bad. It does not mold. It does not go bad. It doesn't get stale. So I have to write a date on it. So after like a few days, I, I go, oh, yeah, I have to throw this away, even though it looks perfect. If it's killing the microbes I, outside, why uh, wouldn't it be killing the microbes inside? I need better bread. I get it. It's hard. It's hard, though, Grambo. I mean, it's a pain in the ass because I literally have to go to a few different stores. You know, there's only one store that sells bread from a baker, right. a white bread that does not have any preservatives. Why in can't it, it just you know? be bread? It, it's, what's that? Nothing. <laughs> I don't eat bread. 
my son eats bread like crazy with all kinds of stuff. So it's like, man, I see him on the daily and he goes through a loaf within half a week. I don't want him taking all that crap in if he can't. So just something to think about, guys. Treat your gut as nice as your plants if you're a grower. How about that? You know? Yeah. Isn't uh, that crazy when you see your buddies and they're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on nutrients for their plants and they're yeah. eating McDonald's? That was me for a long time. I told you, a Brett, a dude specifically, was one of the people in my life that made me realize like, oh, shit, I'm alive. Just like my plants. Oh, my. It was it was through growing weed that I realized yeah. that my gut was alive. It is true. You hear yeah, it. I went. But until you live, you say whack Arnold's. That was what I call McDonald's. But is the it's hard. The I, I got a salad yesterday. A place up here called Chopped. They specialize in salad and wraps and healthy crap like that. Yeah, I would um, see you there. It was twelve dollars. It was twelve dollars out the door. Twelve dollars Canadian. Uh, Wait, Canadian? Yeah. Yes. What's twelve dollars Canadian? Seventy five percent, twenty five percent less American. Oh, well, hang on a second, man. McDonald's costs ten bucks for the McDonald's meal. Isn't it ten and change? I haven't been there in a little while. Yeah, it's getting expensive. Yeah, yeah, pretty crazy, oh, okay. man. I thought you could get. I thought they had the dollar menu where you could put together like an okay meal for five dollars or less. At least to make it feel okay cool, meal. You know, shitty afterwards. It's been a couple of years since I've been to McDonald's, but I'm pretty sure they did discontinue the dollar. Did menu. they? Yeah. You can't oh, even... sign so now times. it's like the two for seven meal or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's I don't my trust work. dollar food anyhow. Man. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, do like a do like dude told you. Your mama, your doctor, whatever. Eat good and exercise. All right. You only got this, as my friend calls it, this flesh bag one time. All right. Dude, you're a good friend. You remind me of that a lot, man. Thank you. Oh, I, it, yeah. And I, it gets, it mo- people motivate you, man. I was at a softball game the other day. My daughter started softball, which is cool. Also, it was kind of hard the other day because four of my friends were on a mountain bike ride while I was at a softball game, but it was rewarding to be there, okay? <laughs> I talked to you that day, and there was only the tiniest bit of resentment in your voice, man. But one, and I, you know, I think this is, as I said earlier, okay to say, but uh, one of the uh, the girls on the team, her dad would kind of come over to talk to her in between innings. He's in a wheelchair. You know, he's paralyzed from you know, everything up here is good. And I'm sitting there leaning against the fence by the dugout, just trying to iron on the game. And almost any time I see somebody that unfortunately became disabled, it motivates the shit out of me. It's like, dude, that could yeah. be you. You're very and lucky. It's not, it isn't now, but it could be at any time. So take advantage, do what you will while you're able. That's all I got. Wow. Fucking. All right. Now we got to edit that, man. Damn it, man. Uh, Brilliant, man. That's brilliant advice, brother. That's why you're the dude. Hey, let's shout out to Paduce Fong Steam Bear. How's it growing? And lighten up again, Tim. That's got to be one of the best. I love it, Tim. That's pretty great, man. How about the Unknown Chronic? Uh, Let's see. Anybody old enough to remember the unknown comic? Grandpa, you got to Google him. It was a comic that he just put a paper bag over his head and told pretty messed up jokes. Uh, he was on the gong show. Now, I know the unknown, know the, <clears throat> the unknown Henson, which is the guy from Squidbillies. Do not touch the tram. That's the unknown uh-huh. Henson. Hey, I'm just thinking, I'd Google the original gong show, just then, not now, oh, DGC, and tell me that they're not all high. Now that I'm thinking about that, what was what was wrong with that show? They all were baked AF. Oh, I did it, man. I did it. <laughs> Scotty. <laughs> I love it. You take the first comment here, Scotty. I think you found this one. <laughs> you know what? This Rico Rodriguez grows. And hey, is that UFC star, former heavyweight champion Rico Rodriguez? Ask, I like, I like to think. We'll have so, to ask okay? Patty the Batty. I'm loving Mr. Rogers at the start. Won't you be my neighbor? Thanks for some excellent <laughs> content, fellas. And like I said, I felt like crap this weekend. And I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to the show. <laughs> I'm laying in bed here and I turn it on and there's the coolest, won't you be my neighbor, Mr. Rogers, uh, just the start of the show opening. And it shows how much you care, bro. Uh, can I admit how lame I am <clears throat> when I made that and I watched it for the first time? It made me misty eyed. I was like, oh. I was like, I, was like I, do, I feel a part of the family. Because like, you used to have a crush on Mr. Rogers? Well, I famously don't have a family anymore if you've been following the show. Whoa. So it's good to have a new family of you guys. I do consider the dude and Scotty my family now. I love you guys. Oh, thanks for the pressure, bro. Does this mean you're sleeping over? <laughs> Just don't beat me. <laughs> 
Oh, shit. Oh. You're awesome, Grambo. Well, I really enjoyed yes. it here, man. I appreciate you guys. And I just I want to say, uh, re- I'm uh, sorry, really quick. Nobody asked him to do that. Nobody asked him to do all these intros. It's what he loves doing, which is yeah. why you're such a great uh, part of the team, bro. Well, and I can't stress enough how much I get messages on Instagram every single day from people. And you, you develop relationships like me and autism dad. You know, my buddy showed me this hey, thing. Wait, watch that guy. He's crazy. He's crazy. But my buddy's a big <laughs> Ghostbusters fan. And he's like, he's like, he had a patch where he's like, check out this cool autism patch I found. I took a picture of it, sent it over to James Mercer. It's like, hey, man, check this out. Yeah, that like, dude one. is cool. So the DGC motivates me as much as anything. When I made the Grand Theft Auto flower thing, I was <laughs> driving home after taking my daughter to school. And I was like, man, what would the DGC like? And it just all popped in there. So that stuff really does. It goes a long way. And uh, some people don't like it, but some people do. Oh, too bad. You know, uh, too bad. I got another comment here. As I find easily with my big cursor, <laughs> it's a, it's like a, what do they call it? I forgot what type of day, like a, a moment in time when you realize you're aging because today I made my cursor one size bigger so I could see it. <laughs> yeah. I got to congratulate both Banner and JR Token. They got glasses. They Ooh. finally got out of denial and got glasses. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen JR's, but Banner's looking stylish. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. It's just like it happens. I don't know how it happens. You stop maturing, but you still get older. <laughs> so, slow burn. Last Saturday show, we were talking glass, right? Talking as far as glass holes, glass pieces. <laughs> One-Eyed Cat Cannabis showed off his glass collection. Yeah. Um, so, slow burn says glass is a no-no for a constant smoker. Imagine after every third sesh, you have to clean the damn thing. And how are you going to clean all those fancy curves on the glass? I right. have seen so many pieces that I've been tempted to buy, and that came to mind. How am I going to clean this damn thing? Yeah, uh, it's true. So, I also smoke a lot. I collect metal smoking pieces like the Dynavap or the Simrel. Same great effect, less weed. So Ooh, Scorpion pipe, man. It's all metal. Oh, this thing's cool. Remember this thing? Mm-hmm. This is a freshie. To save it for you. Oh my. You know what I say yes. when they pull out the scorpion pipe? I say, get over here. Those uh, uh, more, are actually by wolf joke. grinders, but I don't think they're in business anymore. But those are cool little foldable pipes until eventually they will break in your pocket. But for a while, they're good. <laughs> I hear you, uh, Slowburn. I wanted to feature the Dynavap. You can get in to this little personal herb vaporizer, never deal with a battery again. Um, Graham, you can show this B starter pack. Um, it's $69, guys. Comes with everything you need down to the, the vaporizer, um, the torch to get it going, and gets great flavor out of your bud. If you don't, there's all kinds of other devices. I mean, this is just their starter pack. 69 bucks gets you in the game of, of vaping. Going up from there, you can get their induction heater, which where if you don't want to use a torch at all, you simply push a button and it heats it up, clicks, and you're ready to vape. One cool thing about Dynavap, or I leave it is they have so many cool videos and instructions and customer service. And I, can I call it culture vaping culture, Scotty? Okay. Uh, that yeah. Going over the site, dynavap.com coupon code dude will hook you up across their site. I would just so, like to say, hang on slow burn. I smoke a lot of weed too. I don't really smoke much in glass. When I do, I use a simple pipe and I'm more worried about breaking this thing than anything. Okay. What you got? Eventually, it's going to be a sad day. It's like, I got the same. This is mountainside glass from, you know, just a nice solid pipe. Um, but I use all kinds of different devices, really. Um, but my f- preferred, typically, at least for the show, is always I like just to burn flour. It's like a primitive, it's something primitive in me, right? Like, sure. I don't know if it's, it's genetic. Like, I want to light this flour on fire and inhale it. How long do you um, think after they were lighting flour on fire, did they figure out how to roll it in a joint? <laughs> you know, it's kind of a valid well, question, right? Probably pretty quick. Oh, you know, rolling it in leaves well. or something like that. But I don't know. I'm already half through this thing. By the way, if you smoke a ton of weed, <laughs> joints really are the way to get really high. Well, when you it, smoke a ton of weed, uh, you get a huge tolerance. And always smoking a joint will get you high. I think that's why a lot of tobacco and weed probably became popular early is because you can roll it in itself. Yeah, you can you can use the leaf to roll the flower of the plant, and then uh, you got yourself a little canagar. Grimbo's kind of deep. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, very, very my, my boys. I'm pretty high. 
<laughs> Who picked this one from Ivy Herbs? Scotty looks like he has so much fun doing these, just yelling at the camera and waving his hands around a lot. I love it. Thank you, Ivy Herbs. I do. I, I describe Scotty real as Scotty times two or Scott times two. And yeah, when I turn it up to hang out with my friends, I have a great time. And knowing that the DGC is out there uh, digging what we're doing, uh, it does make me uh, just want to have fun. I just talked to her this weekend. She was uh, she's thinking about moving out of where she's from and I think Prohibition land. And she's uh, thinking about moving to Colorado. And I said, best decision I ever made. So, oh, man, she's awesome. DGC hit me up on Instagram. I respond to every message. I love talking to you guys. Yeah, you are so musical. Musical mind. You said, I just want to have fun. I'm going straight to Cindy Lauper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like some phrases <laughs> just trigger the artists in my brain. Yeah. They poisoned us with that stuff. <laughs> I'm having a great oh. time though. Hey, T Powell, 4145 says Jim Belushi is an actor. We were messing with Jim Belushi a couple days ago. <laughs> uh, Jim Belushi is an actor. Not much about him is real. <laughs> and uh, That's actually a good point, right? Like it has to be weird being an actor and trying to be somebody else real good for about a year. No. Yeah, but the question in the question in here is he being an actor in sense of his. I don't know if you showed these pictures here, Grambo, real quick. You can hit on some of these pictures with him with cannabis. Yeah, is we he an Googled. actor there, or is he passionate about the plant and what he's doing? I'm not sure. Do I really take the time to care? That's the most important thing, and I really don't. Let me see. Let's let's look at Jim. I I just googled Jim Belushi weed, and uh, okay. come on, we'll go through it. Oh, Grambo, I can't see it on my screen. But uh, I don't know. Is he, what do you think? Is he all right? <laughs> I mean, anybody could take these pictures and just go stand with some plants and jars and all that jazz. Um, I, but, you, know you know what? I'm not- he's, he's a little better, I guess. You know what? He is getting cannabis out there. And my dad probably identifies with Jim Belushi. So it is an older demographic. And he's probably doing what you need to do to appeal to the older demographic and turn them straight. Maybe they're fairly indifferent and maybe he's doing what he can to turn them pro cannabis. And I'll give him this. Anytime you Google someone's name and weed and this many pictures shows up. I mean, you've got a good PR guy. <laughs> but I mean, he's he lives in weed, man. That's fucking awesome. I think he got into it. So it looks like he's into it. Yeah, I don't know. God bless him. What do you think? Could I get away with wearing a cowboy hat? I bet you could. You could try it. I don't think so, though. <laughs> I could. You just you gotta have a mustache too. First off, you don't have any facial hair in a cowboy hat. That ain't right. No, it's not right. And this comes from the guy who um, wore a giant purple sombrero for an entire show. The dude, other day. I was in Costa Rica. I was trying to fit in. Is that what they wear there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they sold me one there. Let's dude. take it to the news, guys. Out of Hang Vancouver, on. you win. Where I you live. win the news, dude. You win. So the best story this ever. is uh, hey, there's a lot of element, and, and this we're gonna have some fun with this, but it's obviously a seriously pro- serious problem. Let me get so into the weird. narration. Vancouver police arrest man operating dispensary in downtown East Side. I feel like does every city have to have the side? Like, yeah, that's over on the East Side. You don't want to be messing around there. Or South Side? Is it always the East Side though? Is one side more particular than the other worse? I, I, I actually never had a side. I read an article one time that said that the east side is always bad because that was where expansion went to. The east side is always the oldest city in every place in America. Uh, oh, the oldest. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're on the West Coast. Yeah. If you're on the West Coast, man. Even then, because we're always moving west real expansion. So the east east side oh, of town is the oldest part of town across the entire country. Huh. Well, let me, I'll set this up, and Scotty, I know you have questions and comments as well. This first picture here, guys, we're looking at the guy's uh, mobile, mobile. it's a trailer, tandem axle trailer, where he's selling drugs out of. It looks kind of nifty, actually. Portable, tow it around, and or dispensary. So a police statement said the 51-year-old man, um, you can see a picture of him here, uh, has been arrested for trafficking after he started selling cocaine, crack, methamphetamine, and heroin out of a mobile trailer parked near the intersection of Maine and Cordova streets. I'm sorry. It's not funny, but there is, I don't know. Um, it's insane. That trailer is so high profile and it's like a homemade half of a trailer, man. Mm-hmm. It is not like he's trying to fit in. Wow. 
Wow. No, but... we'll click on Graham, but click on the drug menu. Uh, over on the format, I have a link titled drug menu. Okay. Yeah. We're looking at a, 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 like a full menu here. <laughs> it has cocaine and cost down from 20, 50, 90. And then next to it, it has a point system, Scotty. Like, is he, is he being entrepreneurial or like you can earn points for coming back and buying more? I like this. Hey, how's the crack today? Oh, it's good. It's good, man. <laughs> I, I love to buy the cocaine. <laughs> yes. To buy cocaine. There is ID required. Do not think wow. you're going to buy cocaine from me hey. if you're underage. And by the way, if we get your read- parental age gating, it's from this. <laughs> this will be no mystery. So no impurities or cuts. To keep for real, what you're trying to uh, solve here is there is a huge problem in fentanyl and all kinds of crap yep. out there. People are dying that don't need to die. Yeah, I'm all for this. If there's a trailer that wants to provide, say, well, quote, safe drugs, depending on use, or at least drugs we know that are, or, you know, in, that are pure, you're getting what you're trying to get. I think it would be helpful. Um, and, you know, Denver or Vancouver, sorry, recently made the possession of a real small amount. I think it's two grams or something of a lot of these drugs legal now. So you, you, can, you can possess them. But accessibility still isn't there. So that's like kind of has backwards. You know, you should be able to have accessibility uh, for it. So, but he had a good question in the picture on the article, Grambo, of the guy. The caption under the picture says, uh, man, Jerry Martin wears body armor and sells illicit drugs from behind a plexiglass barrier in his mobile drug store. What's that? What's up with that? Me and Kenny were talking about it earlier. and We were just like, nice guy, Kenny. And I'm like, dude, if you went back, we went back 20 years. And you said weed's going to be legal in 20 years. I'd be like, fuck yeah, man. All right. I I, I agree with that. I'm sure I could see that. You tell us mushrooms are going to be legal in 20 years. I'm like, are you kidding me, man? But, uh, (laughs) you know, and now all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, the war on drugs was dumb. It was a big, giant failure. So maybe it is time to really consider other approaches. Uh, I totally think so. I totally agree. I hope uh, Jerry gets to open back up here. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he's running a good, clean business, man. Is there then like Yelp needs to open it up for this stuff, you know? <laughs> you know I'm going to Yelp you and see if you're <laughs> if your stuff's wonder if he, it. His meth is weak. Wonder. <laughs> If he takes credit cards, he's definitely going to get on that match list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's give some love to some DGC producers before we uh, hit to some good memes here, some good social media. I, I, I never open any of the social media, so I can good. be surprised, Gaddy. So I'm looking forward good. to that. But DGC producers, uh, I'm going to give it up to Wilder Weed. Uh, Wilder Weed, how's it growing? And barely burning, burly burn hardly. Got it now. Oh, it just rolls right off now. No problem. Uh, I'm glad you got that one. Yeah. Uh, the prohibited oh, yeah. stone, the prohibited stone. Wow. It's pretty cool. Decent band name, right? <laughs> I go see them guys. I man. Like it. And rock Creek. Freak. I believe that's how you say that, right? It is F U. So. There's two R's in there, man. No, it's two U's. What can I do, man? So Mo Green's wellness sounds like a Missouri dispensary to me and spruce. Dude. Hill Farm. Feel free to chime in, man. And you guys want to give us fall prohibition reports, or especially if you're working at a dispensary, what's going on in your market, what's going on in your area, um, hit us up. Use the contact on dudegrows.com. Dude, who's Mo Green? Grambo, who's what's Mo up? Green? Mo Green, who's Mo Green? Does he sleep with the fishes? Ah, you're getting close, man. <clears throat> he's the Godfather. You're right. He's. I'm sorry, he's not the Godfather. He's a character in the yeah, Godfather. He's somewhere in there. I do. Yeah. Know. Nice. <laughs> All right, oh. what did you find in social media, Scott? Hey, oh, there you go, man. Now, first off, this one just showed up. It's not uh, it's not from DGC, but I couldn't find any Dude Gross memes. I don't know if they have to be approved or something, but I don't know. Slacked on that. But this was just funny, man. What's this guy's name? Jason Momoa? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who the guy is in front. That's Superman. Is it Superman? Yeah. But it just says me, and it's this guy in the- I don't know, man. It's just funny, man. It's <laughs> just funny. I don't know how the hell are you going to explain it, man? <laughs> All right. That's what I got. All these are visual, man. All these. I told you I was what? laying around watching YouTube. But, uh, man, 
I got, I was just watching uh, some amazing artists and I was, was just like, I got to share these, man. These are amazing, some of the stuff. But uh, believe it or not, the three, that one was from BC, uh, one was from Boulder and the other was from Iowa, which is where Grambo's from. It's very interesting. So I figured we'd each represent, man. Dude, you've got probably the best one, mm. man. This guy wields life-sizing steel dragons. He Whoa. makes uh, wow. holy crap. They're amazing. They blow fire. Man. Oh They're my. Unbelievably cool. Wow. Yeah. Man wields life-size got steel dragons. Anyway, it's just amazing in the way. Just uh, you know like, what that technique right there is called? Stippling. You know what, man? It's very interesting. Wow. Comes comes all full circle. Yeah, you're right. It is uh they do it to metal. Yeah. Hmm, this guy over here, man. <laughs> Call back. All right. So my guy, I think my guy's equally as uh, as impressive, man. My guy balances rocks. Oh, and this is the, for me, this is the this coolest is amazing. thing ever. I love this. Have you ever seen that? You walk by a stream and you see that a rock cool. pile balanced. Wow. Come on. That's, that's amazing. That's right? the coolest stuff ever. Well, I don't know. Yours is pretty good. By the way, I put down below the guy quit his job to balance rocks. Once he started getting good at it, he's like, yeah, I knew then that's all I was going to do. Oh, and so man. I quit my job and <laughs> like, holy shit. Yikes. I don't know why that makes me so happy. but it uh, It's pretty cool. There's a guy from Japan that does it. And when he finishes, he snaps. And, and I adopted that whenever I do something good, I, I snap. Wow, man. And then Grambo, yours is pretty cool, man. Yeah. Uh, this guy just got OCD with matchsticks and he makes things with matchsticks. All right. Pretty Let's... freaking amazing things, no? Oh, yes. The uh, the matchstick guy. I can't see the screen. I'm yeah. looking at yours, but what the hell is, dude, what's he making? That was the capital. Dude, you got to admit. Wow. That's not insane. People in Iowa are very yeah. bored. <laughs> How do you. I guess he's retired. No, he's got a whole business here called Matchstick Marvels. How do you make money at this? One of them is like the one of them is like a guidance counselor at a middle school or something, man. <laughs> that's a, that's how I could answer when people are like, "How are you so good at guitar production comedy?" It's like, "Oh, I'm from Iowa. We have a we have a lot of time. We got we got time to kill. We haven't gotten cable yet." <laughs> I'm just kidding, Iowa. I heard it's very cool. Actually, somebody did tell me there's a really cool scene in Des Moines. Is that true? After I'd moved away for 10 years, I went back on the road and I was like, I, I'd experienced every city, you know, major city in the West side of America. Mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit. I was awesome. I met a nice girl. It was beautiful. Nice. Ooh. Des Moines. Des Moines. Yeah, what are you doing? People can't pronounce. I believe it's Des Moines. Algonquin for two rivers because we got two rivers that run through. <laughs> Interesting. Not for me. Just not for me. No Iowa for dude. <laughs> no. It's not, dude. Hey, did they have legal weed in Iowa? I heard. They, <laughs> I heard they just expanded their medical system. Actually, it's kind of crazy. Cool. Yeah, I didn't even hear about it. I Are said you... we'd cover it on the show, and we didn't because I forgot. Uh, all right, right on. When do you got to tell us about Iowa, Grandpa? No, uh, they have corn and Slipknot. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out, DDC. DDC producers, uh, there'll be an after show. The next show, we did not do an after show today, just in case you're over there on Patreon looking for our after show. Another producer benefit. Uh, hooking up seeds in the after show. Uh, and what else can I say, Scotty? Stay higher. DGCCup.com. You're missing out on a great weed party, my friends. Bring it. Uh, June 3rd, up in Fort Collins, Colorado, Saturday. Uh, that's it, man. Thank you, Grambo. Thank you, Scotty. Yeah, great job, guys. Great job, boys. Appreciate it. Yeah, I can call you boys. I know. Boys. <laughs> Take her easy, dude. Some people love to blaze up the day. Yeah, we get happy for noon. And with the boss man's sister, take a little break. That means 